Welcome to Floron. Hey folks, this is Don from BrainBlinks.com, and I'm back with uh, episode two of Floron, my showcase for all the creative tools and toys that I find around the web. And I was pretty happy with the response from the first show. Got uh, quite a few new subscribers, and a lot of people seem to be interested in this kind of thing, so I'm going to make some more and see how it goes. Uh, today I've got a kind of a collection of tools that let you make virtual plants. I've got a really nifty kind of experimental paint program and uh, some other goodies to show you, so let's get started. New and nifty. Okay, this first tool I've got for you today is a paint program called Verve Painter, and it's created by a person named Taron, T-A-R-O-N. Can't really find their, their real name. And I've seen this come through my Google Plus stream a couple times. Uh, I follow Taron on Google Plus, and uh, I had a couple people mention it after the last episode that they'd like to see it in uh, Fleuron, so I thought it'd be a good time to show it off. And what it is is um, it's an experimental paint program that lets you paint with these kind of flowing, goopy, finger painty, watercolor kind of paint strokes. <laughs> it's kind of a, a cross between, I don't know, like a fluid simulation and a paint program. But it's not just a toy, it's it's basically a full featured paint program and it has uh, support for pressure sensitive tablets, it's got masking and layering, all sorts of controls over here for your kind of organic bristly brush and uh, controls over this bumping shiny lighting effect which I'd like to turn up pretty high. <laughs> and uh, you also don't always have to paint with this exaggerated kind of goopy bump paint. You can turn the fluid effect off and just paint with some kind of natural feeling brush strokes. You can even make it so the whole canvas is always wet and ready to be pushed around. <laughs> yeah, it's really a lot of fun. I like these kind of experimental sort of tools that encourage you to do stuff that you wouldn't have done before. Uh, but like I said, it's a full featured paint program, so here's something made by uh, Intergraphics, I think. But it looks like a, it could have been painted with the uh, real world paint brushes. Really pretty image. Here's something a little softer. Here's a really interesting image where uh, this person DBA 999 took some of their uh, illustration, comic book illustrations, and took them into the program and started messing around and came up with this lands this surreal landscape kind of based on the shapes and forms in the original image. I think this kind of thing is really interesting. Now here's a really great post full of interesting experiments from Borhani59. All sorts of really gorgeous experiments and just colors and shapes and patterns. Or here's where they took this uh, illustration of a fish and just took it into the program and went wild. You know, made all these things that they would have never come up with in another program. I think that's I think that's fantastic. Sometimes you get stuck making the same kind of thing over and over and over again. So it's great to get a program like this that just kind of frees you up to experiment and. Uh, just let your imagination go and you might find a new style or a new you know uh, a new way to express yourself it's really interesting here's another that's more kind of like a real world uh, paint tools oh man I like this one that is really cool and it's got a symmetry mode uh, this is kind of like some Rorschachy ink blot tests, which I love symmetry. If you've seen anything on my YouTube channel, you can probably figure that out. <laughs> but uh, it reminds me of Deluxe Paint back on the Amiga that had the symmetry tools. 
I used to spend a lot of time in there making color cycling symmetrical doodads. I really would like to take the time to learn this program a little better. The, and the interface kind of reminds me of the old school um, guy's power tools as well. It's just kind of, and nothing's labeled. Well, there it is labels when you roll over it, but it's just kind of you got to remember where everything is and kind of get used to it before you can take full advantage of it. So thanks to the folks who uh, kind of remind me of this program after the last show. And I'll leave the links for this and everything else down in the description so you'll have easy access to everything. And that is Verve Painter by Teron. Collection. For the collection this week, I've got a nice handful of tools that let you make trees and plants for your 3D projects. Uh, I love digging into virtual dirt and making plants and trees and um, putting them into virtual landscapes and it's just so much fun. I love how it brings a little bit of nature into your computer generated projects. So I've come across quite a few tools that let you make trees. So I figured this would be a good place to uh, let you know about them. First up in today's collection is kind of an old favorite of mine. It's called NG Plant. And it is a free open source tool. And I think on a site you can get downloads for Windows and Mac. And it lets you design and export 3D trees and plants. And rather than modeling each specific tree, what you really do is kind of define how it a tree or a plant grows and how each section of the plant looks so you build a tree out of branches and stems and foliage and then you can generate a new plant based on those rules anytime you want so it is a great way to get a lot of different variety and um, unique plants without a lot of effort once you get the main species of plant made you can just go crazy and make as many as you want and it's very easy to go in and uh, make changes to each individual section as well there's quite a few options for every branch uh, different geometries uh, controls over the UV mapping uh, you can add in your own meshes your own textures this is just a very simple example here maybe we wanted lots and lots of spines on the plant <laughs> Or maybe we wanted the spines to point upwards or something. You know, there's just a ton of things to tinker around with. And once you get the hang of it, you can make all sorts of very realistic plants or just go crazy and make all kinds of alien plants. And then once you get one you like, you can go ahead and export it to .obj or Collada formats. I love NG Plant and I've used it for years and I still use it. It's a great, great tool. This next tool I don't know a whole lot about because I just found it while I was doing research for this show and it's called Arboro and it's similar to NG Plan and that lets you build a tree and make variations and then export the object but this one's based on a tree generating algorithm by Jason Webb and Joseph Penn called Creation and Rendering of Realistic Trees and uh, it seems to be very similar where it's made out of uh, different trunks and levels and leaves but it seems to be a little more um, a little more uh, exact and mathematical than uh, NG plant so you're going in here and you're entering different values for all of these um, parameters directly rather than using sliders and kind of eyeballing it but it seems to make some pretty nifty shapes and uh, on the website you can see that there's some very realistic trees being generated with this one and it also over here while you're working it kind of shows you examples of what all these different variables are uh, according to the algorithm that you're using to generate these trees I really like this tool I think I might come back in here and uh, mess around with it some more next time I'm trying to make some realistic trees. So this one is called Arboro 
and it's also uh, free and open source it looks like this one is a fun one that's actually part of a game that's in development called Luda Silva uh, by Jay Linda and this is going to be a strategy game built around the idea of building a large diverse kind of sustainable forest which I think is a great idea for a game and I can't wait to play it I, I've been following this for maybe a year or two now and uh, I'm hoping that the devs are still working on it because I haven't heard a lot from them lately but I love the kind of prehistoric kind of cartoon slash realistic look on these plants and what the devs have done is released a preview of the game in the form of the plant editor and it gives you a kind of a look at some of the tools they're using to make the plants in the games and how they can grow the plants and kind of shape them over time as they grow and gives you control over the leaves and the colors and the stems and whatnot and uh, it also lets you export the objects into .obj file for use in your own projects. I'm not sure about the actual uh, licensing for these things, but I'm pretty sure that you could use them for your own projects. I don't know why you'd release something that lets you export if you couldn't use them. So, <laughs> but I love the look of these plants, and it's just a fun, really responsive, interactive tool that is just fun to play with. So this is Ludus Silva. And now we have what's probably my favorite tree and plant making tool. And it's a part of the Unity game engine. Uh, Unity is a very popular game engine. Uh, probably because it's got a very powerful free version. And it also will let you build your game for probably a dozen different platforms. Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, Windows Phone, Android, Apple, iOS, um, even Android TVs and web versions. It's just really an amazingly powerful tool and I would suggest that anybody who's interested in making any kind of interactive content give it a look. And it might seem like kind of overkill to download such a powerful program just to uh, make some trees but it's a great tool and it's free uh, now the trees that it makes are kind of a proprietary format off the bat uh, just for use in unity but you can use an external script that I'll link to down below from the unify wiki and uh, it's called export obj and all you gotta do is highlight the tree export it load it up into your 3d program along with all the UV maps and everything so uh, free tool free exporter there's no reason not to give it a try <laughs> and uh, <coughs> excuse me um, it is a lot like ng plant but it's kind of a more refined more feature rich version and you do the same thing you're building trees out of twigs and branches and foliage and then uh, you've got your seed slider that lets you make a gazillion and one variations but it's got some features that are really nice that you can't find in NG plant like uh, this break chance that gives a chance for the plant to break off in certain sections um, it's got some really nice controls for adding your own foliage shapes and textures that are a little easier to use it lets you distribute your branches and leaves in different patterns um, it also lets you individually edit a specific shape on a branch say you wanted a branch to like grow up the side of a, a hill or have a sp specific shape you can just come in here and just draw that shape <laughs> and uh, even though that part's edited the rest of the plant will um, go ahead and be procedurally generated so you can still take advantage of kind of both methods in one plant And I spent quite a bit of time with this tool. I, I love it. I've used it for all, just about all my games and stuff. I even sell a couple packages of trees on the Unity Asset Store called Unitrees. And they're mostly uh, kind of more alien plants. I figure there's enough realistic trees uh, around that people don't need any more of those. And I really like making far out new kind of things anyway. So.
I just love how you can just go in and doop 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 make a gazillion different variations on one tree after you get it set up. It's really like magic. And it does make some very efficient models too if you're careful with the level of detail settings and the number of branches and foliage you put in. You can get some really efficient models going on. So that's uh, the Unity Tree Tool. This next one's a lot of fun and it's called Ivy Generator and it, it does just what it says on the tin. It lets you generate procedural ivy and it also lets you grow it on top of a pre-existing model so you can get it to grow along your tree or um, around a sphere or um, make some artsy fartsy stuff and growing it over uh, th any kind of 3D models you want. You can tell a lot of people are having fun with this app. It's been around for a while but it's still a very powerful, very easy to use tool. Oh, this one's cool. The green man. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And, it's, and it is free and cross-platform. Mac, Windows, and Linux. And it's very easy to use. You just kind of set up some parameters, load in your uh, 3D model, and place a bit of the seed and let it grow over your model. And then when you get something you think you might like, you can go ahead and hit this birth button, and it actually generates the final um, 3D model for you. And then you can just export that, load it into your 3D program, and... Uh, change the textures or paint it up or do whatever you want with it. It's great fun just to sit here and watch them grow <laughs> over the object too. That one looks itchy. <laughs> And it has a lot of parameters too, and you can kind of push these parameters to the extremes and make things that don't necessarily look like ivy, but have a lot of really great crinkly detail and stuff that would be hard to model otherwise. So this is a great fun tool. I've had a lot of fun playing with it. And I've used it for projects like Crash Lander. I used it on the, the jungle fog level where I exported my terrain object and then used IvyGen to make vines that were crawling all over the terrain and it worked really well for that all kinds of uses for this thing so that is IV generator all right this next one is a very interesting tool called plant studio and I came across this a while back uh, someone in my G plus stream I think Benedict Apuno showed it to me and uh, I kind of wish I would have taken a closer look at it because I loaded, I downloaded it again the other day and it's got a lot more features than I thought it had and it's very interesting because rather than using um, uh, some parameters to define the shape, it kind of actually simulates the growth of these uh, 2D and 3D plants. And it has a lot of really interesting features. At first I just thought it was making 2D shapes kind of like that can tree that I showed but it really is uh, making 3D plants and it's actually simulating the growth of these plants to get these shapes and you can even see that let's see if I can it'll even let you animate through the entire life cycle of the plant So it's actually simulating the growth patterns of these plants rather than just the actual, just the simple shapes of the plants. And uh, it also does a neat trick where you can breed a new plant based on the one that you have. So you can go in here and just kind of click on these plants and get a new generation of plants and see one you like. You can double click on that one, get some more variations. And if you get one you really like, you just send it back to the main window and here you have a new plant to mess around with. Huh. 
<laughs> it's just fascinating. I wish, I really wish I was a, a, a strong enough coder and my math was strong enough to do this kind of stuff for breeders. This, I mean, uh, Zeno Farm, this would be just perfect. This is, I would love to be able to grow and uh, evolve new plants in my game, but... Um, for now, I'll just have to s stick with my brute force coding methods and what I've got. But this sure is a lot of fun. And uh, you can also export these objects into .obj files and load them up in your 3D program and uh, have a go with them there. This would be great for 2D games. Uh, you could generate uh, whole gardens full of sprites and stuff for a 2D game or a 3D game since it exports the objects. The objects are a little rough around the edges I found but it'd be a great starting point for uh, making final game ready versions. But I just love this breed a new plant feature. It's fascinating. It will also um, generate Let's see, where was that? Make a time series. It'll, it'll go ahead and generate sprites for you through a whole plant's life cycle, too, automatically. There's all kinds of little nifty little tricks that this thing does that you could really dig in there and take advantage of. So that is Plant Studio. And it is a free program. I believe it's available just for Windows. Uh, but... It sure is fun. <laughs> a nifty tool. Here's a nifty little tool that's uh, right on the web and uh, allows you to easily generate two-dimensional trees. It's called Can Tree, And uh, basically all you have to do is pick the kind of leaves you want and whether or not you want some flowers and uh, pick a bark and hit Draw Tree. And it'll spit out a unique different tree for you to save and use in your own programs this would be great for any kind of uh, uh, like a 2d sprite based game you could create a whole forest of trees with this thing with just a few clicks you can even use multiple flowers and foliage types on the trees and there's quite a few parameters down here that you can change to uh, kind of fine-tune how you want your trees to look I love these kind of free online tools that are just in the web and easily accessible for anyone. Just load it up and go. So there is Can Tree. There's one more tool I wanted to mention real quick, even though I haven't taken the time to mess with it yet. And it's called Z Tree, and it's a plugin for ZBrush. And it looks just fantastic. <laughs> it looks like right up my alley. Uh, it's it uses uh, looks like it uses ZBrush's Z Sphere tool which is a really powerful way to create um, shapes and then be able to adjust those shapes and uh, create complicated 3D meshes. And it looks like the author has just added a, an L system feature to the tool, which is kind of a recursive algorithmic way to make tree-like shapes. And I, I really love the look of this stuff here. <laughs> and it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to play around with. I love ZBrush and having a tool right in there that can make these kind of complicated trees is going to be really interesting. I can't wait to get in there and play around with this one. But that's Z Tree plugin. Okay, that about does it for my uh, roundup of tree tools. Uh, I did leave out some of the more popular kind of commercial programs like XFrog. Uh, the view software from Eon and of course speed tree which is kind of the industry industry standard tree tool um, they're all kind of expensive and I haven't played with them and I'm kind of trying to keep um, the things that I showcase on Fleuron in the free to very cheap range now uh, speed tree is coming out for unity uh, unity 5 here pretty soon so that's kind of exciting it's going to be uh, kind of a rental product for $19 a month so I'm kind of excited to get in there and get my hands dirty and see what Speed Tree is all about 
I was hoping to get in on the beta, but I failed at that. So I'm just going to have to wait till it comes out and uh, pay for it like everybody else. <laughs> um, so that's quite a, it's a good collection of tools. There's some stuff, uh, hopefully, that you haven't seen in there before. And I hope you can get in there and uh, do a little digging in the virtual dirt and see what you can grow in your virtual garden. Toy Box. All right, in the toy box this week is one of my favorite little uh, evolution-based toys. It's called Boxcar 2D. And instead of demonstrating the theory of evolution with animals or plants or what have you, it, it uses these randomly generated vehicles. And you see some of them, they start out and just kind of fall apart and wreck right away. Uh, but some of them get a little ways down this course. And so for each generation, it takes kind of the best performers that it came up with and uses those as a basis to mutate some new designs for the next generation. And unless those run, takes the best performers and does it over and over again. So you get a sort of natural selection effect. And eventually you'll have these cars that are just racing down the track and getting farther and farther. And it's really fun to watch and it's really a great way to kind of get your head around how evolution works. And there's options for changing the track and uh, you can design your own cars. Uh, you can go to the forums, you can see some of the best cars that people have come up with uh, by letting them evolve or designing them. You can just copy these strings and put them into the program. I spent hours just watching these guys <laughs> run along and I've let it run over light, overnight many times just to see what comes up in the morning. It's, it's really a cool a little toy. And there's another one online that's very similar called Genetic Cars 2. I think it's based off the same source code, but it, instead of running them one at a time, it does this kind of a shotgun effect and it just plops a whole generation's worth down at once and then takes the best performer and puts it down. And Whoa! <laughs> that guy was hauling. Um, but this one has options too for changing the gravity and how much each um, new generation is going to mutate and stuff. It's kind of funny how you watch these little guys and then you just, sometimes you find yourself rooting for them. You're like, come on, get over that little bump or feeling sorry for the ones that just fall apart even though it's just a random collection of shapes and wheels. So that is Boxcar 2D and uh, Genetic Cars. Give them a try. Toolbox. All right, in the uh, toolbox this week, I've got a website called Font Squirrel. And this is one of my favorite resources online for free fonts and free fonts that are okay to use for commercial purposes, which is even better because sometimes it's hard to sort through them all and find out the ones that you can actually use for your projects and uh, you won't be violating copyright or getting in any sort of trouble. They're very careful about uh, the specific licenses that these fonts use and you can even sort through them say uh, I wanted to use one in Unity and include the font in the application I can just click this application and see the list of fonts that it's okay to include with your project or the same with ebooks or a web font so uh, not only do they have hundreds of really interesting looking fonts they are very careful about the licensing and making sure that you have permission to use them for what you want to use. I don't I don't ever use any other fonts from the web anymore since I found this site years ago. Um, this is the one here I'm using for Fleuron is the EXO font. They've got a nice preview and they also here have a really interesting uh, test drive feature which is really nice so you can get a specific look at the letters that you're interested in even if you can't spell. Because <laughs> sometimes you're looking for a specific kind of letter A or you just want to see what your text is going to look like before you download the font and start filling up your font folder with all kinds of stuff you're never going to use. Great site. I love Font Squirrel. Follow. I have a couple of my favorite artists for you to follow on the web today. Uh, the first name, Jonathan McCabe. 
and he is an artist that creates generative and algorithmic art and he just blows me away I love his work every time I see something like this I'm just like how did he do that and how can I do that too <laughs> uh, I, I just love the kind of organic kind of alien look to all of these shapes and stuff that he's finding and generating and he's not super active on like Twitter or anywhere but he does post a lot of his work uh, especially on Vimeo and Flickr those are the, probably the two best places to follow him and get a feel for what he does I could watch his stuff all day <laughs> I love it um, oh, I still this this um, multi-scale Turing patterns are that he works with this series called Bone Music just kind of frazzles my brain it's so beautiful and so strange yet so familiar at the same time it's just I love the stuff that he does and he's got a website but it looks like that it's pretty basic <laughs> but he does point to his Flickr and Vimeo accounts and some of his other work that he's working on and the other artist I want to talk about today is Thomas Shahan and I first find out about his work from a video game that he worked on with Colin Northway called Incredipede which is a great little game and uh, he does woodcuts in real life and he kind of has transferred that look over to some of his digital works too so it's got this really cool kind of old school organic feel to it even though it's done on the computer which is something I really enjoy and uh, He also, it turns out, I was already following him after I found out about his woodcuts and stuff because he makes these incredible macro photos of spiders. And uh, I was following him on G+, I think, because of all these spider pictures that he was posting. Just incredibly detailed, focus-stacked images of uh, these miniature little tiny spiders that have such incredible colors and patterns all over and so much character in their faces and whatnot. It just really beautiful stuff he gives uh, workshops where you can go with him and some other photographers to places like Belize and he'll show you uh, how he photographs these macro macro photos of insects and he's also a fellow Oregonian so every once in a while on his Twitter stream or wherever I'll see a, a place pop up that I've been to which is kind of fun and he's pretty active on Twitter so that's probably the best place to follow him and you can get a good look at all of his other artwork on uh, his website he also has a Flickr website that's part of, or he contributes to part of the Oregon Department of Agriculture's Flickr account with all these really interesting uh, electron microscope scans of insects and stuff so all kinds of stuff that he's interested in that we seem to share kind of a a similar interest so that is Jonathan McCabe and Thomas Sheehan two great artists to follow on the web okay thanks bye alright that's flirt on number two I hope you saw some new tools in there that you haven't seen before and I hope uh, more importantly that you try some of those tools and maybe make something that you haven't made before and branch out in a new direction and uh, create something different so let me know what you think down in the comments below and uh, let me know if you have any suggestions for apps you'd like to see covered or topics you'd like to see covered in future episodes and uh, go ahead and hit that like button or subscribe if you like what you see and you want to see more of it so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time on fleuron